Hello everybody, The Lost Joker here, and today I'm going to talk about how to stop yelling when angry. Co-authored by Trudy Griffin, LPCMS, from WikiHow. When you feel angry, do you tend to express yourself by shouting? If so, you've probably noticed that this habit is ruining your relationships with others, and it probably doesn't help you get your way or make you feel better either. Change your communication habits when angry by first learning to diffuse your feelings in an appropriate way. Then go back to the drawing board and state your needs calmly and rationally. Once you've dealt with your anger in the moment, look for ways to cope with your anger better in the long term. Method one, taking a time out. Stop mid-sentence when you notice yourself yelling. The moment you hear yourself raising your voice, pause. Don't even finish your sentence. Think to yourself, what am I trying to say? And what is the best way to say it? Learning to stop yourself before or when you start yelling can prevent you from saying something you'll regret or jeopardizing your relationships. Breathe deeply to ease your anger. Deep breathing promotes the relaxation response. So after a few breaths, you'll feel calmer and more in control. Draw in a breath through your nose for a few counts. Hold it, then release it from your mouth for a few counts. Repeat until the tension fades. Count to 10 to calm down. Counting takes your mind away from what's making you angry and allows you to focus on something else. Start at 1 and work your way up to 10 or even 100 so that you can regain control of your emotions. You can count aloud or silently to yourself, depending on your preference. I think a good method for me would just to be start counting out loud to everybody. Instead of yelling at everyone, I'll just start counting. I might start loud, but I would probably calm down after two or three, you know what I mean? And everyone knows it's a good everyone would know I'm getting mad. And I am doing a method to calm myself down, you know what I mean? I think that's a good idea. Number four. Uh well I wasn't reading the numbers. Get some fresh air. <clears throat> Leave the environment for a few minutes and take a walk around the block. Being in nature can help soothe you and clear your mind so that you can deal with your anger in a more appropriate way. I, I would love to do that. I don't really live in an area where there's a lot of nature around. And I do feel like if I lived around nature, I would be a lot more calmer. I, I do want to eventually move to somewhere where there's like woods around because I'm in a pretty urban environment and... Going for a walk isn't exactly the easiest thing <laughs> for me, but there are a lot of, there's so many other methods and you can open your window and take some breaths outside. There's still, you can still get air that way. Calming yourself outside. Tell the other person that you need to leave for a few minutes. I've, I've done that before. I've like with exes and stuff. Like I've been like, I have to go for a walk and I would leave if it's that serious. You know what I mean? <laughs> Say something like, I need to calm down and I can't do that here. I'm going for a walk. It might feel abrupt, but the important thing is to get yourself out of the room before you say something you regret. <laughs> for real. You can apologize when you get back. Set a fast, Take a walk. Take, set a fast pace to burn off steam. Focus on your legs moving and your heart pumping, taking deep breaths. The movement will calm your body down and eventually your mind too. Force yourself to notice three things around you. It may be the last thing you want to do when you're feeling angry, but force yourself to look at the sky, the leaves on the trees, or the cars passing by. Distracting yourself for even a moment can break the momentum of your anger. And that's a big thing that I need to work on is breaking the momentum of my anger because it builds so quick. It's, 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 it terrifies me how quickly it builds. So that's something I need to really pay attention to. Stretch, stretch, uh, uh, stretch to relieve tension. 
Use your time out to relax your muscles. Stretch each muscle group of your body while taking deep breaths. If you are familiar with yoga, you might also do a few... I'm not even trying to say that word. To help ease tension in your body. There's some yoga position. A-S-A-N-A-S. Asanas? As an S? Calming stretches. Twist your body gently from side to side. Hold your arms. You know what? I'm going to do this right now. Hold on. Let's see. Do I have to stand? All right. Hold your arms up comfortably with your elbows bent. Okay. Twist your torso from your hips, turning one foot, then swing slowly to the other side to loosen up your whole body. Ah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Bend and touch your toes. Bend toward forward from your hips, keeping your spine straight, and reach your fingers to your toes. Let your head and neck fall forward. And relax. It's okay if you can't reach all the way to your toes. Just reach as far as you can. The surrendering pose helps you let go of your anger. All right, let's do this. I'm just going to bend forward here all the way I can. <sighs> oh, let gravity just pull you down. Feels kind of good. Yeah, I see what they mean. Your arms just kind of fall. That's nice. Okay. Open up your hips. Place your feet wider than shoulder width apart and bend at your knees. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Place your hands just above your knees and straighten one arm. Lean your body. Oh, lean your body the other way to feel a stretch in that hip and groin. Hold for 10 seconds, then switch sides. Many people carry a lot of tension in their hips, so stretching them can unlock that anxiety. It's all in the hips. Oh my god, he was right all along. Okay, so that was all method one taking a time out. Now we're going to move on to method two, getting your point across. So that was all, yeah, that was all like how to break that momentum of anger. And this is now going to be when you're in that conversation, how to get your point across without getting loud. That's a problem I have. I feel, I'm going to be honest with everybody because of the household I grew up in. The only way to get a point across was to get loud. And now I'm in the world with everybody else and not everybody like sees that as normal you know what I mean it was so it's normal to me it's not normal to everybody so I need to change I do need to change that about myself I don't want to make everybody upset okay <clears throat> method two: getting your point across think before you speak if you have a tendency to shout when you're mad me you are likely an emotional communicator yes oh Oh, I've never heard it said that way, but that is absolutely what this is. My whole family was an emotional communication. That's all we did was scream at each other. Uh, this means you may tend to speak or act based on feelings and instincts rather than reasoning things out. Take a few moments to consider what you want to say. Wait, wait, wait. Take a few moments to consider what you want to say can help you. Taking a few moments to consider what you want to say can help you evaluate your reactions and communicate more calmly. <sighs> Apologize for yelling. Yeah, that only goes so far if you keep yelling, you know what I mean? Extend goodwill to other person and apologize. Communicate that you realize you shouldn't have yelled and would like to discuss the matter more civilly moving forward. <sighs> That only works if you're actually going to try and fix it. Like, that only works if you keep yelling, the apology eventually becomes meaningless because you keep doing it. You know what I mean? I'm, I, I, if anybody's watching this who actually does have, like, real anger issues, I'm telling you, I'm someone who really is living this, okay? I have ruined my relationships in my life because of my anger. It really hurts. I don't want to hurt people. I don't want to hurt myself. This is important. You have to work on it. You can't just you can't just expect people to understand. They won't. Some people grew up in households that yelling is something that's very hurtful for them. like a post-traumatic st stress situation and they can't be around people who are yelling like you, you know? And if you want them to be around you, 
You got to change. <sighs> All right. Making an apology. Take a deep breath. It feels incredibly hard to stop yourself in the middle of your anger and say an apology. Give yourself a moment to close your eyes, take a deep breath, and get control of emotions. Start with a calming word. Start your apology by saying something like, okay, or all right. This signals the other person that you're changing your tone and can help you to calm down too. I do this sometimes. I will sometimes catch myself, but like, man, it's rare. Like, I do fly off. But once in a while, I, I do that. I go, okay, all right, I'm getting mad. Let's not do this. Be honest and sincere. Tell the other person that you're sorry for yelling and that you're having trouble controlling your anger. Ask if you can start a discussion over and try to express yourself better. That's a good idea. Starting over is a good idea. I don't really do that. Number th <laughs> speak in a whisper. Really, it's just all these are great, but really it's just that first step of recognizing there's a problem before it's happening. That's the hard part for me. All these are great. All this is great advice, but I have to do step one when I'm starting to get loud, like pff, pump the brakes for real. All right. Speak in a whisper. Ensure your tone and volume. Don't keep creep. Sorry. Don't creep back into shouting territory by using a very quiet indoor voice or a whisper. Speak as though you are in a library. If you are talking to your children, get in the habit of whispering or using a hushed voice when you are mad. It's actually a really good idea. Like, even if I'm mad, instead of yelling, just get like this. Get really angry, but quiet. That's <laughs> oh my god, I really like that idea. Like, whisper screaming? I don't know if anyone ever saw the movie The Other Guys. There's a scene where they're at a funeral and there's a fight that breaks out, but they can't be loud so they have to whisper so they're like whisper fighting it's hilarious it's really funny and i think doing that would not only calm me down but make everybody like laugh it would alleviate the tension that's a really good idea i like this i like the speak and whisper idea if i can if i can just remember to do it when i'm mad man that would be a great left turn okay hold on if you're talking to your whisper has a double person. It helps you keep your voice at an appropriate volume and ensures that the other person will be fully tuned in so they can figure out what you're saying. Oh, it's a little, a little sneaky there, but yeah, you're right. Remove a absolute language. Ooh. Some of the words you use while communicating can actually make you even more angry. Drop terms like always, never, should, or must. These words spark conflict because they are judgmental, accusatory, and leave little wiggle room. You always do this. You never listen to me. Oh, man. Remove absolute language. Okay, that's going to be... I mean... Whew. This is going to be work for me, man. I, this, this, I, I, okay. Use I statements. Get your point across more effectively using statements that express your feelings without attacking the other person. These might sound like I feel unimportant I feel unimportant when you arrive late to our meetings. That's a mm, I statements help you take ownership for what you feel instead of putting it all on the other person. Avoid you statements that place blame. Like, you don't care about me. You're always late. I feel like I, I use I statements, but I feel like maybe I use it a little too much. I'm doing this. I'm trying to do that. I want to do this. Yeah. That can. This is good advice, but only if you're not doing that enough. Sometimes using the I statement can go a little too far. And if you, you know what I mean? might make people feel like you only give a shit about yourself but it's there all right so we're on the method three now and it says managing your anger better now here this is this is where we need to pay attention set a rule for yourself not to yell ever Whew. yelling tends to be counterproductive in a conflict or argument 
because it stresses the other person out and activates their flight or white fight or flight response. They are likely to tune out what you are actually saying and just get upset. This is this is exactly what happened. It didn't matter what I was mad about. What mattered was I was yelling. Shit. This is especially true of kids. Make it a goal to stop yelling completely. It may take time for you to achieve your goal, but don't give up. If you find yourself yelling or about to yell, remind yourself of the rule and take a moment to calm down. And there's a picture here with a guy. And he's got like... It says, fast heartbeats, brow sweats, flushing face. My palms get sweaty. I get really... When I'm angry, my hands sweat profusely. Learn to spot anger cues. Take note of the sensations happening in your body. This can help you identify when you're ang getting angry so you can take a depth steps to deal with it. Well, I, they're only sweaty after. Like, I only notice when I'm, like, calming down. I'm like, oh, my hands are sweaty. You know what I mean? Like, uh, But I'll try. Yes, they're right. Learn to spot anger cues. Becoming perceptive to your anger. Recognize your physical symptoms of anger. Observe your behavior for a week and jot down. Oh, get a notebook jot down how you feel when you're angry your heart might be fast for example you might start to sweat or your face might get flush evaluate how you're feeling throughout the day check in with yourself periodically to see how you're feeling and reacting in the moment you can even use an app to help like eye counselor is this just an advertisement <laughs> anger or measure an anger scale which you can find online okay well there's anger scales which I should look that up. Pick up on your anger and deal with it quickly. When you realize that you're starting to get angry, make a del deliberate effort <clears throat> to confront and calm your feelings before they get out of control. Address issues immediately instead of letting them pile up. Yeah, this is a big one. This is something I can attest to, especially recently. Like, if something's upsetting you, talk about it. Don't don't think you can handle it. Don't think that... Don't be of the mindset that you're like, it's not going to get worse. It probably will. So talk about it when it's a little problem before it becomes a big one. I'm telling you from personal experience, you may ruin relationships if you don't heed this advice. Address issues immediately instead of letting them pile up. If you're the type to let things build and build until you explode, change your tactics set set aside a wait set aside a set window of time to discuss problems this should be regular and ongoing huh for example rather than blowing up at your spouse when they fail to complete chores for the third time in a week <laughs> address the issue by address the issue during a nightly check-in nightly check-in do daily relaxation techniques make relaxation a part of your daily routine by checking in with your breath, doing mindful meditation, or performing progressive muscle relaxation. These strategies can help you can help you keep stress and anger at bay so you don't feel the urge to yell at people around you. Try to do one relaxation for 10 to 15 minutes daily. Easy peasy. This is like the easiest thing in the world. Relax for 15 minutes? I just need to look up a mindful meditation or progressive muscle relaxation. I'm writing this down. Guys, I really... I think this is what I needed. Okay. Alright. Practice self-care to, <clears throat> to reduce your stress levels. You may be getting angry and yelling a lot because your stress levels are too high. I mean, that's definitely true my stress levels are through the roof this last month has been this last year and then january of this month of this year was just too much for me too much for me not just what's going on in the world but what's going on in my personal life there's a lot and my stress levels have never been higher like i can definitely attest to that my stress levels have never been higher you may be getting angry and yelling a lot because your stress levels are too high. Take your anger as a signal that something in your life needs to change. Set aside time every day to do things you need to do for your physical and emotional health, such as 
eating three healthy and nutritious meals a day, getting enough sleep, seven to nine hours a night. I I have this week been getting eight hours every night. I've been I have been working on that, and my headaches have significantly reduced. Um, the problem is I have to take this medication to do it. I can't fall asleep without it, and that what I don't like that. That I'm like I need a something to do it, but it is helping my headaches, and I'm going to talk to my doctor about that. Uh, taking at least a little time to yourself to unwind and do things you enjoy. See now the here's here's the issue. Here's I want to talk about this specifically. I turned the quote things I enjoy into work for myself. I screwed myself a little bit. I love video gaming. That was my thing I enjoy, my thing to unwind, and I made it into a job. I'm trying to stream. I'm, I am more treating it like a hobby, but this last week it wasn't a hobby anymore. People, a lot of people joined my Discord. It became a community, and I, it wasn't that they did anything wrong or I felt pressure from them, but I put pressure on myself to do things differently than I was doing them, and I, I overdid myself. I, I, I did it. I did everything to myself. I did this to myself. I should have been honest with everybody from the get go that I wasn't going to be playing what. what what we were playing when we met forever like I fucked up man and I let a lot of people down and I feel terrible about it and then I lashed out at people when they said they didn't like things that I was doing instead of being real from the beginning I fucked up man so nothing I can do about that all I can do is focus on what's next. And from now on, I'm going to be eating three and healthy. Well, I don't know if this is someone else said that you should like eat multiple smaller meals throughout the day. Diet is important. So instead of saying eat three healthy, nutritious meals a day, I'm going to say focus on getting a good and healthy diet, depending on your body type and gender and weight and, uh, and uh, blood type. Even I've heard like there's different diets depending on the blood type you have. Apparently like different foods will affect you differently. Look into that. I want to look into that. I think that's interesting. Cause that sounds like that kind of sounds like it would make sense. You know what I mean? If food, if different foods would affect the blood flow, like if depending on what I eat, I could have a heart attack. Then wouldn't my, wouldn't my blood type matter on the kinds of food I should eat? I think maybe a little bit. I don't know. I don't really know the science on that, but it does make sense to me a little bit. Getting enough sleep, so important. I can't I can't tell you enough, guys. I am in my 30s and I have headaches all day because in my 20s, I never got enough sleep. I have like a serious problem right now. Please get enough sleep. Please exercise. <laughs> Taking at least a little time yourself to unwind and do things you enjoy. I need to find a new thing I enjoy. I enjoy my turtles. I think every day what I should do, I want to get, what I want to do is get like a big plastic kiddie pool in my living room and put it on the ground with some like sand or something maybe. Maybe not sand, that'd be nasty. I'd have to clean that. So just the big plastic, it would be easier to clean the plastic. So just the big plastic thing. And then once a day for like 30 minutes or something, I'll just take the turtles out and put them down so they can walk around. I feel bad that they don't really have a roaming area. They have a basking area, but it's very tiny. And they're getting the light they need, but they don't have somewhere where they can just walk. I can, like, feed them in there, you know what I mean? It'd be easier to clean than putting the food in the tank, because then the water gets dirty. That's actually a really great idea. I could feed them in the plastic thing, and that way the water would never get dirty. Well, the poop. Well, whatever. All right, anyway, sorry. <laughs> Moving on. Under managing your anger better, this is... Number six, it says, talk to someone you can trust. <sighs> talk to someone you can trust. And the hard part is, sometimes the someone you can trust just left. <laughs> just walked out of your life because of this kind of thing. So <laughs> that hurts a little bit. But yes, the listening ear of a partner, sibling, or friend might be just what you need to reduce tension or brainstorm appropriate ways of dealing with anger or solving problems. Reach out to your support system rather than bottling up your anger. If you don't have anyone you can trust, consider speaking to a counselor about what's making you angry. Um, it's been recommended to, me, recommended to me. I do see a therapist. I don't disagree with that whatsoever. I understand it is difficult uh, finding a therapist, especially if you're, you know, you don't have proper health insurance, stuff like that. There's a waiting list in my area. I am on that list now, but... 
I don't know how long that's going to take. And according to forums I've been reading, it could be months to a year before I could actually get help. So if you, if you are, if you are of the mindset that you need help, get on it now because it might take a while to get it. And you know, it could, that's dangerous. The longer you go without help, the more dangerous it is. So get on it early. Opening up. Sit down in a quiet, safe environment. Ask a close friend or family member to sit down with you when you're both feeling calm. Choose someplace quiet where you know you won't be walked in on, such as your room or a quiet park. Be honest. Tell them about your anger and what it feels like when you're yelling. You can discuss what you're doing to overcome it and what difficulties you're having. They can suggest tips or simply listen to you. Yeah, we were, we were doing that, but I kept yelling. <laughs> <laughs> not good oh it's okay to ask for help talking to someone about your feelings doesn't mean you need to ask them for advice maybe you simply want someone to vent to if you do want to see if they have any tips though you should f feel free they'll respect you asking f for help and may offer some good advice Evaluate if you need anger management or communication classes. This is, I don't even need to evaluate. Yes, is the answer. <laughs> if you're having a really hard time with yelling or other angry behaviors, me, you might benefit from a class that teaches healthy coping techniques. Think about your behaviors and how others react to you. Ask your therapist or doctor to recommend an anger management program if you feel you need one. Yep. All right, so. What I'm going to do after I end this video is I'm going to call my doctor and set up an appointment and tell them I need a anger management help. Find yourself yelling. All right. You might need a class if you find yourself getting angry often. Other people tell you you yell a lot. <laughs> That's all anyone says. <laughs> that was the, uh, that was me using, uh, what's it called? absolute language i have to not use absolute language anymore <sighs> that is something that a lot of people say about me yes other people tell you yell a lot you you feel like others won't understand you unless you yell at them well i don't feel that way now but yeah like in the moment like when I'm not thinking that's where it gets to because that's how my family was dude they wouldn't listen to me unless I screamed at them and then they did that's that's what wasn't good like once I got loud they would look and be like oh Tyler is right about something Tyler is saying something that matters I gr I grew up <sighs> like I'd get in trouble a lot when I was young and most of it was I, I, you know, I do something bad, but every once in a while I, I would feel like I didn't do something bad and I was being punished. Here's a specific situation I want to talk about. Cause I remember, I remember this one. I was very young and I was given a curfew and my mom said to me that I had to be home by 10 30. I believe now I don't really remember now it's years ago, but I remember it was like, she said 10 30 to me and I got home at 10. And then she's like, I told you 930. And I know she misremembered because I wrote it the fuck down. <laughs> like the second after she said it, I text, I had told my friend, like, I have to be home by this time because my mom. And he was like, all right. Why is that everywhere? Oh, my God. Sorry. So we got into a huge fight when I go home because she was like, you're grounded for two weeks. And I was like, the fuck I am. I listened to you. I'm home an hour early. She's like, I told you 930. You know, it was a whole issue. And I got real loud. And I remember seeing her face because like for the first time, like for <laughs> she was like, oh, am I was I misremembering? I don't know if that's what she was thinking, but like I saw her see me react that way. And she was like, I don't I I felt heard. Because I was like, I'm not trying to not, I'm not trying to bullshit you. I'm being honest. You said this and now you changed it. And now I'm going to be grounded for nothing. How is that fair? Like I scream, I was screaming, of course. So 
So that was a common thing in my household growing up, yelling to get points across. I mean, we yelled when we played board games. We yell all the time. It doesn't help that my stress levels are through the roof right now. So I'm. it's a combination of things. It's not just like my family. It's not just this and that. It's me and a lot of other things going on in my life and a lot of things from my past and a lot of things that I never worked on over time. It's important to work on these things, guys. Let me tell you right now, I just lost a bunch of friends, man. And I don't just mean on my Discord. I know there might be people watching this. It's not just Discord. I've lost friends in real life, too, guys. Like, this problem's real for me. It's not... It's everywhere. And, uh... I want to work on it for real. And I hope I can... If anything, if anything, I hope I can help other people get ahead of this early. I'm in my 30s. And it's, a, it's created such a problem for me. Try and get ahead of it early. If you are in your early 20s and you have anger issues, seek help. Work on these things. Talk to someone. Talk to me. Talk to someone who's dealing with it in their 30s so that he can help you. I'll, I'll talk to you. Join my Discord. <laughs> if you need help, join my Discord. I'll help you as best I can. But I am not a licensed therapist or anything like that i'm just some kid who also deals with these issues so i can give you my perspective on how it feels i can give you good advice on what not to do because it's the things i did <sighs> yelling can be a tricky habit to overcome this is someone who wrote some things. Yelling can be a tricky habit, kind of especially if you find yourself often resorting to it. But you can definitely break the cycle and improve your ability to communicate without feeling like you need to yell. The moment you hear yourself raising your voice, pause. Don't even finish your sentence. Stop and think to yourself, okay, what am I really trying to say here? As you practice that habit, you'll get better at catching yourself before you start yelling. Try taking a few breaths or counting to 10 while you think about what you're trying to communicate. If you need to, walk outside and get some fresh air. When you feel calmer, you'll start, you can start talking again. You'll find you don't need to yell, and the more you practice, the more you'll build the habit of stopping yourself and getting too worked up and yelling. This question is, is anger a mental disorder? That's a good question. Is anger a mental disorder? Anger is a completely natural human emotion that can be triggered by a lot of things such as stress, frustration, or even pain. Think about the last time you stubbed your toe. Oh man, the words that came out of my mouth. In some situations, it's, a totally, it's totally appropriate to be angry, like if someone is trying to hurt you. But a lot of the time, anger isn't a helpful emotion to have, especially if you're trying to communicate with someone. However, if you don't have the ability to control your anger, it can be a form or a symptom of a mental disorder. If that's the case, you can work with a counselor, a therapist, or psychiatrist to better control your anger. And if necessary, take medications that can help. So while anger itself isn't a mental disorder, it can be a symptom of one that needs to be resolved. How do I stop a very quick temper when my mouth reacts before the brain engages to control my actions? If you do yell, stop yourself immediately and tell the person you are sorry for yelling and you take a break. Then do some breathing exercises and go outside to release anger. It really, the trickiest thing is really that initial being able to stop yourself, being able to recognize you're yelling. Like I am so, I'm a rational human adult. I most 90% of the stuff in here, I know the problem is I don't have, I, I'm not good at react at catching myself and I need to work on it. Well, this is actually very helpful. 
And I like some of these methods. I'm going to try them. I like the counting one. I like the whispering. I'm going to try and combine that. Whisper counting is going to be something I'm going to start doing. If I, fi if I find myself getting there, I'm just, I have to catch it. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just calm down. Learning to spot anger cues. Take note of the sensations happening in your body. This can help you identify when you're getting angry so you can take adaptive steps to deal with it. It's difficult. Anyone who's dealing with it knows how difficult it is. Stan Lee talked about when he was writing the Hulk character that it was just a reflection of who he was. His arguments with his girlfriend or wife. That's what the Hulk was. And I can so relate to that. This monster that comes out of nowhere and you hate it. You don't, you hate how destructive the monster is, but it's you. It's you. I can relate to that. I don't want to hurt anybody anymore. And I'm going to work on this. I promise. I am promising. Not everyone. I'm promising myself. This isn't about everybody else anymore. This is about me. Like I need to do this so I can be happy. It's important. And I hope other people can... If, if they need help, they can relate to this and they can heal too. They can find help. If you need help, I, I will try. But like I said, I'm not that great. I'm working on it. Anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and follow The Lost Joker on Twitch and YouTube. And definitely tune in next time for more... I don't even know what to call this. Joker's healing space. <laughs> I might do a self-help thing one day. Who knows, you know? Like, hey, man, if this helps other people, gaming's one thing I like to do. But, man, if I could if I could f help myself become a better person and then help other people not do what I've been doing to people, help them become feel better about themselves, I would love that. That would be so cool. Alright guys, have a good one.